hello and welcome back to the Villa Villa podcast. I am here as always with my good friend Dan Wiseman. Dan, no niceties today, no formalities. I know exactly how you're doing. We don't need the small talk. This episode was actually supposed to be a delayed Danny Ings announcement because that came out of nowhere. Um, caught me right off guard as I was about to enter the Suicide Squad. Um, a squad, actually, which I'm feeling like joining right now, funnily enough, Dan, after the news that's dropped this evening. No cap, just been sobbing in the car back from Sheffield for the past hour and a half. Um, yeah, Jack Grealish has gone to Manchester City. Um <sighs> Say something, Dan. <laughs> I, I, I don't know where else to go. Uh, this is this is the the hardest we've done. Villa fillers, mate. After failed promotion pushes, we've done Villa fillers after failed in, you know playoff finals. We've done Villa fillers when, for all of the world, it looked like we were going to get relegated. We've done Villa fillers when we've lost cup finals and. Oh God, nothing, nothing like has has been more difficult than this, mate. It's um, it's hard. It's funny, you know. It's funny because you and I spoke it was yesterday. Yeah, literally yesterday. And I prepared myself. I was telling you, mate. I was like, no, nah, I've done it. This is the new era. The sun is rising. You know, and there's, there's like all these amazing transfers and all these rumors and stuff like that. And I thought, mate, I've prepared myself. I'm ready for it. Let him go. If he doesn't want to be here, he can go. And then the announcement comes and then you see that video he put on his Instagram and you see him in that oh, fucking blue shirt. And it, oh, mate, it comes in a, a completely different way, doesn't it? But um, let me just say, because I know we went so much time talking about it. What we were actually meant to talk about today is that Danny Ng signing, which is so exciting which was so brilliantly kept under wraps and a fantastic price and a, and a player who is going to do so many brilliant things for this club. And that is a wonderful signing. But right now, as was the case with Leon Bailey, we were talking about yesterday, just getting lost in the fog. I can't think about anything else other than, uh, other than the guy that's left. I think we need to kind of preface it. I think whatever you guys are feeling right now, I think it's totally valid whether you're, angry whether you're sad whether you're disappointed whether you're heartbroken that's okay to feel that your feelings are totally valid I think given the circumstances given you know what we've heard from the you know the live press conference with Kapurslo the sort of details of this this sort of you know unspoken gentleman's agreement 100 million pound release clause for Champions League clubs that you know we'd kind of heard whispers about for a long time May you know confirmed by Perslow in this live stream makes the past twelve months a bit more you know difficult to take as well. Dan, knowing I think you know, like we kind of said off air yesterday and and kind of on the podcast, if there was ever an ounce of of Jack not wanting to be at the club, then you know we should get rid of him. And I think you know not get rid of him, but you know what I mean. You don't want to keep a player that isn't happy. Um, so I think you know the, the right things happened. That it, if I'm, you know, trying to take the emotion out of it, it's probably the right time in his career. Um, you know, looking at the trajectory the club is on, I think, mm-hmm. you know, Jack Grealish would have been key to have assured European football within this sort of three, four, five year plan. But, you know, if you look at that four or five years time, he's 30, Dan. So, you know, at that point, he's clearly not key to the plan. So, uh, you know, things have accelerated, transfers have come in. And let's talk about Danny Ings because... I mean, yesterday, after you know the dust had settled, we finally got the Bailey episode out after some diabolical internet in Sheffield. Charlotte, babe, I'm sorry, we need to sort that out. That that was a joke. We need to we need to up the broadband speeds there. Plus, net are doing us no favors in Sheffield. Um, but you know, we finally got that up. Gassed about Bailey, you know, just you know, we kind of kidded ourselves into feeling better about this whole you know situation with Jack Dan, um, and then. You know, as I'm walking around the streets of Sheffield, I've not even checked my phone. You know, Charlotte's told me she's gone, Aston Villa have signed Danny Ings. And I said, no, they haven't. Don't be stupid. I said, don't be stupid. No, they haven't. Because this came out of nowhere. She goes, well, why have, why have I just got a notification from Aston Villa saying that they've signed Danny Ings? 
so I'm jumping for joy. I can't believe this. This came out of nowhere because there were whispers, and I mean whispers yesterday morning, Dan, that Villa were interested in Danny Ings, but they've kept this so under wraps. You know, even in the official club interview that Michelle Owens did with Danny, um, he was, you know, saying he wasn't even able to tell his dad. It all happened so fast. There's an interview with Oriol Romeu from Southampton saying he thought that he just had a back injury and that's why he wasn't in the squad yesterday for Southampton's friendly. It's happened so fast and, you know, again, you've got to look at that. This is an, an absolutely, undoubtedly a positive of Jack Grealish leaving the business we've got done. The fact we're, we've been able to sign arguably one of the Premier League's most clinical strikers, Dan, and that is something that we will get into uh, a bit later when we do more of the deep dive. Uh, Danny Ings is just a fantastic striker, Dan, and, and, and although I probably don't sound it, I am absolutely gassed, mate. This guy is the dog's bollocks. Oh, you're, you're absolutely right, mate. It's it's a, a transfer that, I mean, I was uh, I was looking through the numbers. So, I mean, it sounds so futile now. You're right, mate. But go on, right? Let's, let's, the, the voice of optimism, mate. That's what we are. Go always, on. always. Let's do, it. let's do it. Danny Ings uh, has an average of 0.56 non penalty goals per 90 in the Premier League since 2019. The exact same figure as Harry Kane. We've picked this guy up for £25 million. It's an unbelievable signing, mate. Regardless, and we said this yesterday, regardless of what happened with Jack, I'm still so confident in this playing squad, the depth that we have. I mean, mate, I've been dying to ask you all day. I have no idea how any of this works, by the way. I can't, I'd love to be able to sit here and say, oh, he's going to play, but you know, he's going to read, be nicely into Buendia or, or, or Watkins in a two. But it's like, you know, he's going to link... Is in a four four two or? A, but I've honestly, I sit here and I have absolutely no idea how it works. But it's also exciting, mate. This is why um, this is why the weekend's going to be so brilliant. We just need to get into Villa Park, welcome this new dawn with players that I don't think we've we've ever seen such an exciting playing squad at Villa Park in a long, long time. So let's get behind it, mate. Let's get. But this this Jack, that the story is done. And I was saying to you, and I've, you know, after we became a podcast, I saw other guys sort of tweeting that picture of Carney replacing Jack as, as a substitute and saying this picture will mean, you know, mean even more one day. And, and that's what I'm excited for, mate, that there's kids that can pick up that storyline. Um, we've got guys that are going to do what Jack could spread it out across the team, which I think is probably more important. And hopefully we'll, we'll be better for it, mate. But Danny Ings is, is, is an absolutely incredible sign, mate. Incredible. Absolutely. And it, it does beg the question, how do Villa line up? Because we'd seen a few times, certainly sort of tail end of last season, Dan Villa did often switch to 4-4-2 when things weren't going their way. I think that is something that Dean Smith has absolutely considered here because, you know, countless times we've seen Che Adams play up in a two, whether that be with Shane Long, Che Adams, Michael Abathembe, even Armstrong at times as well for Southampton. But he can also lead the line by himself. Um, he does like to sort of drop into them pockets uh, in that sort of 10 position at times as well to receive the ball. He's not afraid to do that. Running at defenders is his gambit. Scoring goals is absolutely as well. 12 goals last season. Uh, did miss a few games through injury, though, the sort of injury prone um, sort of trait that he's been uh, labelled with, uh, you know, over recent years at least. Perhaps a bit unfair. He's only missed 11 games out of his past two Premier League seasons which, you know, Jack missed, Jack consistently misses 13 um, to, to constantly bring up our ex, Jack Grealish. Um, you know, he, he consistently misses 13 games a season. So instantly, you know, you've got a, a backup striker or potentially a starting striker, depending on how Dean wants to line up with the squad. Um, that, you know, he's another player in the squad who you can absolutely rely on, you know, four assists last season as well which is really important. And, you know, the kind of the stats that, again, I look at that do genuinely impress me is, uh, you know, of course, the, the, the pressures. Ralph Harson, who was Southampton, before uh, the sort of tail off, you know, the first sort of half season, were uh, a very industrious side. They covered a lot of ground. Um, and whilst he, he's sort of within the top sort of, 29 percentile of forwards over the past years averaging about 16.19 pressures per 90 which uh, you know is first of all it is incredible despite you know only being the top sort of um 29 percentile there that is 
that there's some remarkable numbers going there. Um, you've just got to look at that compared to Ollie Watkins. Again, it's around that same area, 16.93 pressures per 90 on average from Watkins. You can see where he's going to fit in as well. Something, again, that really, really impresses me. An average of 1.95 blocks per 90. You know, that puts him within the one, top one percentile of strikers for blocks. That tells you exactly what his game is. I mean, if you haven't seen Danny Ings, perhaps you're living under a rock. I know we've got a lot of new Jamaican subscribers, so shout out to you guys in the comments of the Leon Bailey episode. Please familiarise yourself with Danny Ings. He is an absolute bagsman. Um, but, you know, that, that demonstrates how well he leads the line and it totally eclipses um, the average blocks from Watkins per night, which is 0.51. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see how this lines up, as you say, Dan, because I feel like for ages we've kind of tooted the trumpet down that if we sign Tammy or whoever that we, you know, plausibly could see Oli play out wide. And there's been a lot of backlash from the fans about that. But I think this signing cements it because you, Ollie Watkins is undroppable at this point. So I wouldn't be surprised come the start of the season, we see Ollie Watkins play on the left with Danny Ings taking the sole striker on, mate. What are your thoughts on that? I, mate, it's, it's one of those where I almost feel a little bit for Ollie, I think, because he has done absolutely nothing worth like justifying him losing that striking role. And look, whilst, whilst I'm saying that I'm not, you know, I'm not going to say he's going to get the hump over going and playing on the wings. He's, he's not that kind of player, but you do feel for him because he's, he was fantastic last season. One of the shining lights of, of our campaign. And, you know, even when he went through that sort of eight, nine games without a goal, the performances we put in the distance he covered, he did everything that he'd been asked to do. And, Look, whilst I'm, I'm I'm open to seeing him on the wing, and I, I hope he is too. You sort of you do feel for him a little bit because you know we've gone and got this guy from Danny Ings, and you know in that time frame that I was talking about, Dan only Salah with 32 and Harry Kane with 35 have scored more than Danny Ings' 31 goals in the Premier League since the start of 1920. It's an insane haul, and it, he, that guy is not going to come in and sit on the bench. Danny Ings is is coming to start, and you do look at Ollie's position and think, okay. He has played on the wing before. You're absolutely right. So it's not like it's an alien position for him. And, uh, you know, he will definitely take it over being pushed to the bench. But I do feel for him a little bit because there's no doubt he will have finished last season going, right, OK, good season under the belt. Time to get back for another one, leading the line for the Villa. He's got all these amazing players that are feeding into the front man. And then all of a sudden he's become the one that's doing the feeding, not the... <laughs> do you know what I mean? And so, yeah, I, I do feel for him a little bit, but... The, you're, mate, you're absolutely right, mate. The, the main overriding principle is just the depth and options that it gives us. I think we're um, a four-four-two, maybe would be interesting. I, I, I think it's, it's a sort of that that sort of approach. Might I'd like to see the two two um, dovetail in, in that front line, but we'll we'll wait and see, mate. The weekend is going to be very, very, very revealing because we're all waiting on Dean to see just exactly what he's got in mind for all of these players. Um, because it's not even like we've signed players that are just, apart from Ings, really, that are cemented to one position. You know, mm. Bailey's played all across that sort of midfield to wing uh, three, and, and if you include the attacking midfield, he's even played some time up front at Leverkusen. Emmy Buendia can play pretty much anywhere across that front line as well. You've got um, Young, who can obviously push up and, pl and play on that side as well. So there's, there's a lot to um, to sort of question. And, and the Sevilla game is going to be very revealing, mate. And uh, yeah, just want to submit, I'm, I'm really excited for it, mate. Absolutely. And, you know, we can't go a podcast without mentioning XG. Again, just remarkable. XG last season, 8.13 for, for Ings. Scoring 12, outperforming his XG. Absolutely fantastic. That gets... A certified thumbs up from the Villa Villa boys, doesn't it, Dan? Uh, absolutely fantastic. And again, it you know we've we've just got like feel feel how you feel about Jack. The club is undoubtedly going in the right trajectory, signing these kind of players. You know, some may argue twenty five million pounds is a lot of player for a twenty nine year old striker. Um, so I certainly wouldn't argue that. I think when you're looking at your Lukaku's, your Harlands, your Canes. Uh, being dubbed with you know 100 million pound moons uh, moves of course they are fantastic players and they are in a, diff a completely different echelon to Danny Ings but when you're looking at what Danny Ings provides he's a guaranteed Premier League goal scorer his experience is going to be vital for Wes and Keane and if they stick around as well they will learn a lot from this man uh, not only just in you know 
uh, a, a 101 in goal scoring, but everything off the ball as well, I think, which, you know, to be fair, Keenan and Wes do a lot off the ball. Uh, however, you know, having Danny Ings around, someone a bit older, a bit more experienced, um, he, he's been there, done that, got the T-shirt, played for some very big clubs, scored some very important goals. That kind of experience, again, is going to be invaluable. And you get that in Ashley Young. You don't necessarily get that with Bailey. You don't necessarily get that with Buendia. But, you know, I think the recruitment so far has been absolutely solid. Um, hopefully we can expect some more incomings to, to help soften the blow, Dan. But overall, I think we've had a very good window, haven't we, mate? Yeah, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. It's uh, something that um, I don't think we're quite done yet. I don't think I'd expect anything much more, you know, of the, of the scale that we've seen. Um, you know, it does seem to be like and that, that personal announcement. You know, I think he actually said that we've already bought um, the Jack Grealish replacement. And so I think those, I think in the offensive areas, we're already done. I think we, we all know that. There's a little bit of work we'd like to do in those defensive areas and stuff like that. And still wait. I think we need a and I'd like another holding midfielder. Um, I think with with Engels leaving, um, maybe another centre back. And it looks like we we still need a goalkeeper as well. Um, so you know, a few more incomes as well. I wouldn't expect anything too grand, but at the same time, I'm I'm at peace with that because <laughs> yeah, anything else added to that forward line would just confuse the shit out of me, mate. So um, yeah, I'm, I'll, let's leave that the way it is. We've got more than enough in that department, and uh, yeah, let's get the rest sorted and. Uh, see how it all works out absolutely hopefully we can make a bit more sense of this squad after the severe game I'm absolutely gassed to be back at Villa Park Dan I know you are too after you know what's been a confusing um, and somewhat depressing few weeks uh, without being able to sort of uh, you know be in and amongst it at the football but here we are Dan things are looking good this season is going to be absolutely phenomenal I'm sorry we can't come at you with some more excitement we genuinely are over the moon with Danny and you know you wouldn't believe the reaction when we found out uh you know and we're, and we're sort of texting each other um but yeah it, it, it you know dampened by the obvious circumstances but if you guys enjoyed this podcast it would mean the absolute world if you hit the like button and comment your thoughts below on the sign of Danny Ings if you aren't already make sure you subscribe as over 55 percent of you guys who are watching this video right now aren't subscribed so you know it would certainly make Dan and I feel a lot better if you just hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell button so you never miss a video or podcast from us here at Heart of the Hulk. So as I said, if you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe and up the villa.